Greetings, this is the Timeshare Traveler. Today is episode 134, 134. Saving m money by using timeshares for remote work. I happen to be in a situation where I'm going to be working remote here in a bit. I'm changing careers uh, rather than traveling all over the place. So, but I have a chance to work remote, and so I did this for myself, and it saved, looked to save me a lot of money. So let me go through the process I, uh, I talk about. First, I'll just briefly touch on working remote and be more specific about mine. And then I'll, I'll, I'll walk through the key secrets that I sort of walked through to figure out how to save money for myself. And I think that that's why I'm sharing this video, because I think it, it could work for a lot of people. Um, and and my, my other point is I didn't want to sacrifice quality. This was not about, oh, find the cheapest hotel and sacrifice that way. I wanted to uh, uh, live a, a, a reasonable life while I was doing that and have a home away from home kind of thing. Um, and then I'll go through actual a couple examples, one of which I'm actually using, and I found another one that uh, just two examples of where 50%, uh, I could say 50% over hotels or even uh, Airbnb for that ma matter. Um, and then I have a few little last uh, minute sort of other options. So before I go into the details of each one of those things, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my channel. So hang in there, we'll be right back. Hi, this is Cliff, and I'm the Timeshare Traveler. Welcome to my channel. The purpose of my channel is to educate those who love traveling in timeshares. I've been an owner, owner for 15 plus years at uh, timeshare ownership. I have elite ownership with Marriott, Hilton, and Worldmark. I have a, published over 100 timeshare video reviews, and I've published over 95 timeshare tips. I can be found on Facebook at Timeshare Trav, or Twitter, Timeshare Trav, and on the web at www.timesharetraveler.com. I'm back. And so I'll first talk about working remote. And uh, I started with Airbnb because Airbnb is everywhere. And so that's that's kind of like uh, I'll start there and see if I can do better because um, that's a good place to start. Um, and ev again, everyone's scenarios can be different. Say, for example, a couple examples I came up with was you're an independent consultant and you're working on remote um, for a job and you come back on the weekends type thing and you have a short term assignment so you need to do something. So those are options and if you happen to be an independent business person like I am, um, then you know, the, typically people are not paying for your hotels you know, unless you put that in the contract. My scenario is I'm working in Napa, California as I start my real estate career. I wanted to focus on Napa um, and provide a, a affordable housing for the area because it's, it's, it's in great need. And so as a real estate agent, I can actually do that by better than me personally. I don't have enough funds to generate enough houses, but as in a, helping other people buy and make money and create more affordable, that works for me. So that's my scenario. Um, and I need to find a place and buy a rent. I'll figure that out. Um, but while I'm doing that, I'm going to kind of work remote there, and then on the weekends I'm staying with my kids until I figure out what I'm going to do. So I'll probably have a couple months of that. So I'm uh, working remote, and Airbnb is where I started, but I found timeshares to be 50% cheaper or even less. Uh, and I'll, let me go into that detail. Okay, so here are the key, are the key secrets to keeping your costs. Um, first and most important is actually your food is actually quite a bit of that. So stay in places that have kitchens um, to keep food costs low. So you sort of like staying in a house. So it's not, it doesn't feel that much different. So working remote, um, and again, it's that home away from home kind of feel that I want to sort of thread throughout the, um, the presentation here, the uh, video. Um, just in a timeshare, just a general understanding. These are general. Friday and Saturday, those two nights generate about 40% of the points um, in a weekly uh, 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 use of a timeshare. So Sunday through Thursday, which is your work week, because you, you check out on Friday if you have a Thursday night, that's only 60% of the week. So you can really stretch your timeshare points when you're using them in this, in this manner. And it's a good use of them. Um, it's not always just vacations. Um, use hotel points to get hotels with kitchens. Nothing is better than free. And I hopefully, I if you've watched this channel, you say, I always take points when I do the sales presentation. So right now, when I'm now trying to start a new career, figure out what I'm going to do, and I'm going to use those points to get hotels for free um, with kitchens in them. So it'll be similar to, uh, you know, staying in a condo. Um, I Another option, um, some of the timeshares I'm picking, uh, uh, I, I, I love Vacasa, which is part of the Wyndham family, and you can book one-bedroom condo, so it's almost Airbnb-like, and it's actually fairly 
similar to Airbnb, so I can actually um, book for 15,000 points a night, uh, winning rewards points, I can book a condo similar to Airbnb. Again, I would want to reiterate, don't book cheap hotels because if you, you want to try to have a home away from home, it'll help you on your work. I mean, if you have to, you have to. Um, you know, money doesn't, you know, that's, a, that's a, something we're working on. And if, you, if you're costing you more to stay where you are than the benefit of the work, then it, that's obviously not worth it. But anyway, that's, that's my key secrets, the way I do it. So I stretch my timeshare points. I use the least amount. Um, and that's what I'm able to do and I, and I save because I'm cooking just like I would be cooking if I had an apartment and I will at some point have an apartment condo or something. Uh, before I get into the examples, I want to make sure I talk about don't sacrifice quality. Again, if you have to, I don't want to, I don't, you know, you, sometimes you have to, but in general, if you can keep from uh, sacrificing quality, having an environment similar to a home, condo, whatever, that makes you feel more a home away from home because that'll make the work environment feel um, better like you're not constantly thinking about that I'm making this big compromise so you're actually feeling like you're part of what you're trying to do um, do not stay in budget hotels and again unless you have to stay in studios one bedrooms with kitchens um, most have full kitchens in that kind of situation and when you use the points to book a hotel get a hotel with a kitchen Don't, you know I do have a, I do carry a, a electric s skillet so I can get by in some cases but I try not to do that that's kind of the, that's my first level backup before I get to the, the inexpensive hotel and it's just nice having pools and hot tubs it kind of feels like you're in a condo complex um, staying in timeshares and, and and some of the hotels actually have the free breakfast and even um, it's like a Homewood Suite will even provide uh, some level of free dinner, so in some nights you don't have to cook at all. So there you go. That don't sacrifice quality. That's one of the. I think that's one of the key tenets, so that you'll feel better about working remote and feels more like home. Okay, I did two examples, and I, actually one of them I'm actually using. So the first one is the one I'm actually using is uh, Napa, uh, California, March 19th to 24. I've already booked it. I looked at Airbnb is where I started, and it was $1,200 for for that. Uh, five nights and again I could have booked an Airbnb um, for a month and if my rates would have been a little lower but I didn't need it every night I'm gonna be staying with my kids on the weekends which is great to see them um, um, so that would have been quite a bit more so I started there looking at that and then I looked at the uh, Zavino Bello which is a, a world mark property and I happen to be a world mark owner and it's 4500 points plus the $99 since it's part of the Wyndham family I have to pay that extra but that turns out to be about $500 uh, for those five nights or $100 a night, which is quite a bit less than Airbnb. And it's it's literally the same thing. It's actually, I, I might say it's even slightly better than some of the Airbnbs, but that's, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna knock it. I was trying to, I was trying to be as best equal as I could be. And there's biases everywhere. So apologize if, if you have a different opinion than, than me. Um, I looked at a hotel kitchen uh, place that I'm probably gonna also use. It's $977 if you actually book it um, on the Hilton site um, or 168,000 points. And because you get the fourth night, uh, the fifth night free in this scenario, it turned, that's how you end up with 168,000. And that's, again, I'll, that's reiterate, take the points when you do the sales presentations. Here's when, here's when that payback comes back. And then I looked at Vacasa as well for a one bedroom. Um, they have them for 75,000, that's 15,000 points a night, win and rewards points, so again, that would be free. And again, I take the points when I do the sales presentation. Example two, um, I looked a little further out, because I had booked this stuff in March about a while ago. Uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, April 9th to 14th, again, it's a Sunday through a Thursday, so that's uh, the benefit that you get if you're working remote, because typically you come in and out on the weekends. Um, Airbnb low end was a thousand to eighteen hundred in Scottsdale. I didn't want to pick Phoenix because there's some low end places, but they're not necessarily in the best locations, so I didn't want to take that. Um, the Hilton uh, Scottsdale uh, Villa Studios with a kitchen um, was, um, and I've actually stayed there. And there's a review. It was thirty six hundred points, which turned into just under five hundred dollars. So it's again a little under a half. You know, um, within the Scottsdale area, the Homewood Suites just outside of Scottsdale was $1,100 or 216,000 points. Again, so that would make it free, and you get full kitchen, breakfast, and stuff like that. The Vacasa, same 
thing, um, 75K for uh, Wyndham Rewards points so you could stay for free. So those are my two examples. Let me wrap up with just a couple other options to look at. Um, the last option is uh, last call reservations with RCI. You can usually get them for under $400. Um, you have to book it within 45 days, so that puts it a little risk if you, try, if you have an ongoing commitment to work. But it's, it's an, a, a good additional thing where you can get under $400 a week. And again, that translates to about $1,600 uh, a month, which is probably less than you'd have to spend for a monthly rental if you were doing it that way. Um, there is limited availability, and I'll put a link to in, in the description down below um, of the video that I showed how you can how you can do that both on Interval International and on RCI. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. Please give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe.